The Hickory Chair by Lisa Rowe Frostino. Sundays, when I was small, that gran of mine was good at hiding. The first time I played hide and seek with her and her older grandchildren, she disguised me as the pillow on the bed that Gramps had carved long ago for my father. Nobody found me. When I was the seeker, I could almost always sniff everyone out. Even Gran, the time she stood inside her robe behind the bathroom door. She had a good, alive smell. Lilacs with a whiff of bleach. I loved Gran's smell and her warm face when we played touch your nose at the gold mirror and her salty kisses when we sat on Gramps' old army trunk in the attic and listened to the wind sing on the roof. Most of all, I loved her molasses voice as she read out loud to me, you're my favorite youngest grandchild, Louis, and this is my favorite chair, she'd tell me. Gramps carved it from a hickory that one screw on this very spot. She clapped her hands together. Lilacs and a whiff of bleach danced around. Every time I sit in this chair, I lean back, shut my eyes, and see that old hickory tickling the belly of the sun. Me too, I said, and I really did see it, even though I was born blind. You got blind sight, said Gran, and she tickled my nose. So the Sundays went until one day in school. I felt my father's shadow cold on my cheek. He told me Gran had died. At the funeral, I touched her hand to say goodbye. It was cold and smelled too much of lilacs, not enough bleach. Afterwards, the family went to Gran's house to hear her will. Around her rocker, it was hard to breathe. I sat on my father's lap, and when every eye had been cried dry, Uncle Lofton blew his nose one last time and said, Remember how Gran used to surprise us with notes hidden under pillows, between book pages, in pockets, and anywhere else she could connive? My father laughed. Once, she sneaked into Gramp's workplace and left him in a love note in the wrong lunchbox. Remember, I began, when I was a baby, and Gran was rocking me to sleep in her favorite chair. But when she stood up to take me to the crib, the chair came with me. My mother picked up the story. You'd poked your, this hole right here, her fingernail scratched the wood, and made a ball of batting in your little fist. Well, sighed Aunt Candy Mae, let's see what's to become of that chair now. Her purse clicked open. I knew what it was because leather and peppermint smells jumped right out. Paper crackled like hickory limbs in the wind, and Aunt Candy May commenced to read Gran's will. It didn't take long. To each of my favorite people, I leave a note hidden in one of my favorite things. Keep those things, sell whatever's left, and split the money between Candy May, Lofton, and Lewis Sr. That rascal, Gran! my father said fondly. Smells swirled with excitement as we all dashed off to search Gran's favorite things. As the others peered into nooks and crannies, I felt the mirror slowly, inch by inch, until I pinched a butt of paper under a gold leaf. Hoping it was my note, I rushed to Aunt Candy May. She read, for my favorite middleest grandchild. Well, that was cousin Lucille. After that, the grandchildren raced to the attic and searched the army trunk where we and Gran had listened to the wind sing. Stowed beneath the canvas lining, I found a note for my favorite grandson born on Tuesday, Cousin Billy Bob. I found a slip of paper holding a place in the tattered Bible where Gran had recorded her family stories. For my favorite tallest son, my father. Believe it or not, nobody else had found any notes yet. I told you that Gran of mine was good at hiding. Louis, did Gran tell you where to look? My brother asked. No, but she said I got blind sight, I answered. Well, if that's what it is, I'm closing my eyes too. My brother hurried off to use blind sight on the bed Gramps had carved for our father 
where Gran had hidden me the first time I played hide and seek. Remembering that, I hoped Gran had left my note there. But the note my brother coaxed from behind a knot in the headboard said, for my favorite eldest grandson whose father snored here. Well, that was my brother. Now it seemed that the entire family had got blind sight. Before long, they all had their notes, all except for me. I was a finder, but not a keeper. How could Gran forget her favorite youngest grandchild, I cried. She couldn't, said my father. Mark my words, that note will turn up. We searched everywhere, even Gran's sewing machine, her bronze lamps with fringed shades, her kitchen table with six rickety chairs, but there was only one thing left I thought Gran would want me to have. Gramps had carved it from a hickory that tickled the sun. The air around it was hard to breathe. I held my breath and felt Gran's favorite chair inch by inch, carefully as if it were made of dried leaves. I dug up a nickel, a cap of a pen, a hairpin, a button, and, at last, a scrit of paper. The air suddenly tasted light and sweet. Aunt Candy May read, baking soda, salt, bleach. Oh, Louis, we're so sorry. Louis is the youngest, said my brother. Could Gran have left those notes before he was born and then forgot to add his? Silence sucked everyone's breath away and the air curdled in my throat. I ran out of Gran's house. Many Sundays we searched for the note over and over to no avail until it came time to sell the rest of Gran's things. Just pick out something you want, Louis, said my father. Anything at all. Carefully, I climbed onto Gran's favorite chair and leaned back. The cushion sighed a good, clean smell. Lilacs with a whiff of bleach. Gran's shape was rocked into the seat. As I jiggled to fit, I heard her molasses voice pour out. You're my favorite youngest grandchild, Louis. The lost note no longer mattered. In that chair, I was on Gran's lap again. Now I am as old as Gran when she hid her messages. Not so long ago, when I thought my favorite youngest grandchild was asleep, she poked her hand in this hole right here and made a ball of batting in her little fist. When I unfolded her fingers, I found a wad of paper and I swear it smelled of lilacs and a whiff of bleach. For my favorite youngest grandchild with blindsight.